Hi, I'm Allie Ward, Editorial Director of Contagion. Joining me today is Dr. Michael Edmond, Associate Chief Medical Officer, Chief Quality Officer, and Clinical Professor of Infectious Diseases at the University of Iowa. Dr. Edmond and colleagues recently published a viewpoint in JAMA on moving personal protective equipment into the community in the form of face shields. Um, this piece has been getting a ton of buzz on Twitter from the IT community, so Dr. Edmund, let's dive right in. Your sure. article asks the question, can we reduce COVID transmission in the community by universally adopting face shields in addition to existing interventions such as testing, contact tracing, and hand hygiene? So why a face shield? So that's a good question. Uh, we first addressed this inside the hospital. Uh, this started um, several weeks ago as we started to look at all of our plans for COVID. Um, and what we realized was um, the supply chain for face masks is uh, quite compromised uh, because most of the factories that make face masks, medical grade face masks are in China. They've been impacted by the outbreak and were shut down. So uh, we were concerned that we might not be able to make it through the outbreak uh, having enough face masks. And so we started to look at face shields uh, to see if we could get them. And what we found is that because they're used in other industries, uh, they were available and we were able to source them and bring them into the hospital. So within a few weeks, we were able to have every person in our hospital in a face shield, uh, both those seeing patients and those that aren't seeing patients. Um, and um, we learned a lot about face shields uh, in, in, the, in that implementation because we, we implemented somewhere between 13 and 15,000 face shields uh, in a relatively rapid period of time. Um, then I started to think about whether this might be something that we could do in the community. Um, part of the problem that we have again in the community is if we were going to ask people to wear face masks, which, we, which CDC has now asked them to do, uh, again, we don't have uh, good uh, supplies of medical grade face masks and people uh, are therefore having to wear cloth face masks. We know from the medical literature that cloth face masks are inferior to medical grade face masks and so um, they probably do provide some protection the cloth face masks but but probably not where it needs to be um, and so uh, we started to think more about um, whether face shields might be an alternative uh, in the community setting. Great, and um, you touched on it a little bit. We can get more into it. What is the benefit of a face shield over a face mask? Do we yeah. have any evidence that supports the effectiveness? So in terms of effectiveness, um, with, uh, with this particular virus, uh, we don't have evidence yet. Uh, I think we can infer from what we know about influenza in which there are simulation studies um, that show uh, very significant decreases um, in uh, contamination of a person when, when droplets are coming at them uh, when a face shield is being used at about 18 inches. Uh, so, and, and it's about a 96% reduction. So it's very, very good. Um, so, and that's only with one face shield, a face shield on the, the receiver end but if everybody is in face shields, you have both source control and protection of the susceptible person. Um, and so we would envision that uh, the effectiveness would even be better in that situation. Right, right. Um, you touched a little on the whole production supply chain aspect of this. I mean, we do hear all about the shortages of medical masks and other PPE. Um, so you're saying we wouldn't run into those issues with face shields. How can we leverage some of the existing supply chains if we were to universally adopt these? So one of the great things that's happened is that a number of large manufacturers have been able to retrofit their production lines to produce face shields. So for example, Apple and Nike, John Deere, GM, they're all now making face shields. Um, and there are a host of smaller companies uh, that are doing it as well. Uh, even though that's not their normal business, they're producing these and selling them. Uh, so uh, it's actually, you know, and I keep an eye on this because I have an interest in it. It's relatively easy to be able to find a face shield if you want to get one. Right. And I guess there's also the thing that they're reusable. 
um, probably. So many good. advantages, and one is the fact that uh, they're durable. So a paper mask, the standard medical mask, uh, has a finite lifespan. Um, once they get wet from the exhaled air, um, they lose effectiveness. They start to de de um, to degenerate. Um, so they're not made to last. On the other hand, a face shield is is a durable uh, piece of equipment because it's primarily made of plastic. And the other great thing about it is you can you can clean them in between uses. So you could just wash them off with soap and water or any kind of household disinfectant that you might have. Um, and another great advantage of them. Um, over face masks is that they prevent you from touching your face. Um, and one of the things we know about face masks is that some people will begin to touch their face more to try to adjust the mask. Uh, and that's exactly what we don't want because if your hands are contaminated with the virus, then you're going to auto inoculate yourself, potentially touching your nose or your eyes or mouth um, and give yourself the virus. And so uh, the face shield um, and I've done this firsthand. Now, wearing face shields in the hospital when I'm seeing patients is sometimes your face will itch and you go to scratch it and you realize there's a shield there and you can't touch your face. So that's one of the, uh, the great benefits of wearing a face shield. I imagine there's also some, um, you know, social things too, where, you know, a face shield doesn't impede those social interactions as much as a face mask in terms of kind of stifling vocalizations or even covering up expressions. Right, so facial expressions, you can still see. You can see people's lip movements, which helps with speech perception. Um, one of the things that my wife, who's an oncologist, talks about is how difficult it is to have uh, important conversations with patients about prognosis or end of life, those kinds of things when you're wearing a face mask, where you can't, it, it, it is a barrier to communication. So I think the face shield's a little easier from that standpoint. Definitely. So I guess the million dollar question is, how do we convince people to wear these? We seem to have a hard enough time convincing people to practice social distancing. Yes, or even washing their hands, right? So um, all of these health related behaviors, I think, take some time. Um, I guess it's interesting to me that, uh, that even though we haven't been dealing with COVID for that long of a period of time, I think people are changing their behaviors. You know, I can see it every day when I go out to take a run in my neighborhood. Uh, if there's another runner coming in the opposite direction, one of us will cross the street so that we're not close to each other. Um, I think um, you're seeing more people wearing, wearing some type of face covering when they are um, going, to, for example, to the grocery store. Uh, and I think they are more cognizant of hand hygiene. So I think it's happening. But I think with any health-related behavior, it, it's, it's not uh, something that happens instantaneously. It takes a lot of practice for us to be able to do it. Absolutely. Um, do you see society being able to possibly reopen or get to a new normal sooner if we added face shields? To well, that's, that's our hypothesis. Yeah, our hypothesis is that um, if every person were in a face shield, the transmission of this virus would go down. We think it, we would be able to, to decrease the R naught to less than one. Um, and in that case, we would be able to open up society sooner because we're able to use some other adjunctive means uh, to social distancing to getting that uh, transmissibility down. Um, and you know, if we were to universally adopt these, that could incorporate you know, some sort of policy decision from a government standpoint. What about convincing, you know, the government or, or leaders who can make those types of decisions? Right. Well, I think that the issue now is, and I think we're seeing this, is um, the difficulties of doing what we're doing now, which is to keep people um, sheltering in place, uh, restricting their movement, um, those are hard things uh, for our society to, to, to grapple with. Um, if we're able to use something as simple as a face shield to allow society to, to relax some of these more difficult things, uh, then it might be an easy sell. 
because I think people would see the benefit of that. Right. Um, have you received any feedback on your piece since it was published last week? Yeah, we've received uh, feedback from a lot of people, some people very supportive of it, some people concerned about infectious aerosols. Uh, one of the things we talk about uh, in the viewpoint is that, at least at this point, the, the evidence um, suggests that the primary mechanism of transmission is droplet and not aerosol. And of course, the face shield is great for droplets. Uh, it'll catch all those droplets on the shield. Um, if there's aerosol transmission, um, then the shields wouldn't be as good. But again, we think by having uh, both the susceptible person uh, and the infectious source in face shields, even that aerosolization will be markedly decreased. Um, and there's nothing to prevent people from putting a mask on underneath of the face shield if they want to do that anyway. So I, I think that um, the feedback that that we've received is sort of what we, we've expected. We, we see people on both sides of the argument. Dr. Edmund, is there anything else that you would like to add? I don't think so. I think we covered it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing your insight. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.